In part one of this travel series, I visited Wall Street, Battery Park, and Chinatown and headed over to the Chelsea District. In part two of the travel series, we will visit Highline, Chelsea Market, Hudson River Park, and the Chelsea Piers. We start off at Highline. The High Line is a public park built on historic freight rail elevated above the streets on Manhattan's west side. Safe from demolition by the neighborhood's residents and the city of New York, the High Line opened in 2009 as a hybrid public space where visitors experience nature, art, and design. The High Line is now one continuous 1.45 mile long greenway featuring 500 plus species of plants and trees. The park is maintained and operated and programmed by Friends of High Line in partnership with the NYC Department of Parks and Recreation. The best way to experience the High Line is to simply wander, though as you explore, you may want to linger at some of the park's most distinctive and magical spots, such as the following. To get to Hudson River Park, walk towards the direction of the piers through 14th Street Passage where you will see beautiful views of the harbor and skyline. Walk in the direction of 10th Avenue towards Pier 57. Hudson River Park runs 4 miles along Manhattan's west side attracting over 17 million visitors a year. The park provides an oasis for New Yorkers and visitors alike with a variety of recreational and educational activities. The largest open space in Manhattan since the completion of Central Park, Hudson River Park is transforming 4 miles up to King Industrial Waterfront into a beloved urban recreational paradise. Hudson River Park is where you go in New York City for recreation, relaxing events, culture, dining, panoramic views, and more. On more than a dozen public piers, not to mention miles of pathways and landscapes, you'll discover a park that offers you more than you can imagine. It's a place that surprises and delights visitors with a diverse and eccentric range of activities and experiences that stimulate senses and allow spirits to soar.
TripAdvisor is the world's largest travel guidance platform, helping hundreds of millions of people each month become better travelers from planning to booking to taking a trip. Travelers across the globe use the TripAdvisor site and app to discover where to stay, what to do, and where to eat based on guidance from those who have been there. With more than 394 million reviews and opinions of nearly 8 million businesses, travelers turn to TripAdvisor to find deals on accommodations, experiences, reservations on tables at delicious restaurants, and discover great places nearby. As a travel guidance company available in 43 markets and 22 languages, TripAdvisor makes planning easy no matter the trip. If you're going to be in New York City in the future, use my links in the description to help you out with your future planning. Cruise Direct is a leading online travel company dedicated to providing customers with better deals than any other cruise website and access to great deals on cruise vacations. Cruise Direct offers special rates and savings on cruise bookings with some of the most popular cruise lines in the world and every deal is backed by a price guarantee. You won't find these prices on any other cruise booking website. It's a cruise finder and booking site committed to helping you research all your cruise travel options to find a cruise that fits what you're looking for. Use my links to find last minute cruises and to search for other outstanding cruises. Transformed from its original marine time industrial use through an award-winning historic restoration, Pier 57 features ample indoor and outdoor public spaces for year-round enjoyment. Here you will find a rooftop park, a waterfront food market that celebrates New York City's independent food culture, city winery, community spaces, an interactive gallery, and classroom focused on local wildlife and waterways. Created under the guidance and mentorship of the James Beard Foundation, the new Market 57 features something for every palate. The dining hall's 15 plus vendors showcase the culinary and cultural diversity from New York City's local and independent food culture. Pier 57 was originally constructed in 1952. It is listed on the National Register of Historic Places, in large part because of the innovative engineering techniques that keep it afloat. To get to the rooftop park, simply follow signs to the rooftop park. You can get there by elevators or stairs. The nearly two acre rooftop park and the walkway around the perimeter of Pier 57 are open to the general public daily from 6 to 1 a.m. Offering incredible views of Hudson River Park, the New York City skyline, and New York Harbor, the rooftop is the perfect place to add to your morning walk routine, meet for a lunchtime picnic, and gather with your friends for an unforgettable sunset. Indoors, a new 7,400 square foot public gathering place called The Living Room provides seating and tables with extraordinary views of Little Island and Lower Manhattan. You can enjoy a coffee or just relax in a comfortable place to connect and gather in all weather conditions. Little Island, a new free public park pier within the larger Hudson River Park, open to the public on May 21st, 2021, providing New Yorkers and visitors from around the world with unique green space unlike any other in the city. 
Components of the original Pier 50 fort nestled among more than 350 species of flowers, trees, and shrubs include a 687-seat amphitheater and an intimate stage and lawn space, along with dazzling views of other portions of Hudson River Park, New York City, and the Hudson River. Little Island was designed by Thomas Heatherwick of Heatherwick Studio with landscape designed by Sydney Nelson of MNLA. With more than 66,000 bulbs and 114 trees planted, some of which grow up to be 60 feet tall. Little Island's distinct exterior is supported by concrete piles. On top of the piles, 132 concrete tulips make up the structure of the park. On top of the piles, 132 concrete tulips make up the structure of the park. Each tulip shape is unique and has different weight load capacity to hold soil, lawns, overlooks, and trees. The landscape provides a visually surprising and inspiring experience as visitors walk across the park. Cotopaxi is guaranteed for good, built to last, sustainably sourced, and ethically made. The company stands behind their products, which is one of the reasons why they have received more than 2,000 plus 5-star reviews. Their products are durable by design, but if there's a problem, they'll make things right. Cotopaxi is well known for their Alpa Travel Pack. They have a 28-liter, 35-liter, and 42-liter travel pack, along with duffel bags, which come in 50-liter and 70-liter sizes. If you need a travel backpack, I'll leave the link to them in the description below so you can get started on your backpacking journey. Viator is the world's one-stop shop for researching, planning, and booking destination activities in more than 400 worldwide destinations. Get recommendations from our local New York City experts on what to do, what to see, and when to see it. They offer thousands of activities, city tours, off-the-beaten-path experiences, educational tours, family-friendly activities, event tickets, city passes, and day trips. No matter what you're planning to do on your trip, Viator probably has something that fits your wants and budget. Check out some of the Viator tours available near Chelsea Market. From Little Island, walk over to Pier 51 and pass by Day's End, one of the biggest pieces of public art. The Whitney Museum, in collaboration with Hudson River Park, has developed a permanent public art project by David Hammonds. Entitled Day's End, this monumental installation is located in Hudson River Park along the southern edge, along the southern edge of Gansevoort Peninsula. Directly across the, directly across the museum. Day's End derives its inspiration and name from an artwork by Gordon Mata Clark created in 1975. Day's End will serve as a ghost monument to Gordon Mata Clark's early work, alluding to the changing history of New York's waterfront with an open skeletal structure that precisely follows the outline, dimension, and location of the original structure on Pier 52. As one of the largest public art installations in New York City, Day's End is now publicly accessible and offers an extraordinary place to experience the water. Located on Pier 51 is a kids' playground named one of the top five playgrounds in New York City by CBS News. This playground features climbing equipment and slides, water and sand play, a pretend boat hall and ample seating, along with all traversed by a stream of containing bronze inlay of aquatic life. The Pier 51 play area is open all year long, but water features are turned off seasonally. While not immediately obvious, the Jungle Gym pays homage to the fort once located on the nearby Gansenfort Peninsula, also known as Fort Gansenfort.
Fort Gadsden Fort was an important part of New York City's military campaign during the War of 1812. It was demolished in the mid-1850s to make way for new market uses, including the multi-acre West Washington Market. To get to the Chelsea Piers, walk back in the direction of Little Island and Pier 57. Continue on until you reach Pier 59. Situated on Piers 59, 60, and 61, and the head house that connects them, Chelsea Piers features numerous sports and entertainment venues for golf, rock climbing, field sports, ice skating, fitness, and even bowling. In addition, the complex also includes several event spaces along with several screen studios and a commercial marina with both excursion and private boats. In the early days, the Chelsea Piers were docks for the famed White Star and Cunard Lines and welcomed most of the world's greatest liners. Restaurant.com certificates provide the best deals for every meal and allows customers to save while dining at thousands of restaurants across the country with just a few clicks. Whether you're browsing for a quick bite or planning for a big night, it will help you discover the perfect dining experience. The deals are easy to use and works just like a discount, coupon, or voucher. Simply select the restaurant and certificate denomination of your choice, complete the purchase process, and present your certificate to the server on your mobile phone or printed copy. The savings will appear on your final bill. As an added bonus, restaurant.com certificates never expire. Take advantage of some of these special and promotions going on using my links. Go City is transforming the way you see and experience the world's greatest destinations. With Go City's passes, you can visit bucket list attractions, enjoy top tours, and enjoy plenty of hidden gems, all of which are handpicked by local experts. Plus, you can say goodbye to multiple entry fees and paper tickets. With Go City, it's one price, one pass, and everything you need is right there on your phone. If you are interested in saving some money, use my links to get started. To get to the Chelsea Market, walk back in the direction of Highline, continue on to 11th Avenue at Pier 57 intersection, take West 15th Street, make a left onto 10th Avenue, and you will arrive at the back entrance. If you prefer to go through the front entrance, take West 16th Street and use the 9th Street entrance.
Chelsea Market has long been an iconic culinary destination in New York City and has become an internationally renowned brand as it is considered one of the best indoor food and retail marketplaces in the world today. Attracting 6 million national and international visitors annually, it is one of the most trafficked and well-written about destinations of any kind in New York City. For both local foodies and international tourists, it's entirely possible to enter the market in the morning and not exit until lunchtime. Located in the heart of New York City's Meatpacking District, the market's collection of distinctive and diverse merchants add up to more than just your average food hall. Rather, a lively marketplace where one can shop the region's finest fishmonger, take home the finest cuts of meat from one of the area's best whole animal butchers, load up on cheeses, fresh produce, and imported Italian dry goods. This long history and the stripped down brick architecture of the building gives the market a unique character. If you don't know what to do in New York City for a day, I would suggest looking up some parks to visit because honestly, any one of New York City's parks have fantastic scenery. I would also suggest visiting Chelsea Market. 